Yes, no, the microphone will, will tour the room, please. I just wanted to ask um, Catherine what she's working on now. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to finish a monograph um, on Tunga, um, which I started five years ago, but now the publisher and the, I don't know, the stars are right for it. And um, I've got some ideas of things I want to do with Melanie Smith, and we're, um, when she comes to London in the autumn, I hope we can start working on them together. Um, There's a question along. This is a question for Catherine as well. Uh, as a Latin American artist, I feel sometimes that England as a place to exhibit is a very tricky one for health and safety issues. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you see that affects the way that we consume Latin American art here? And I, I agree, and uh, maybe that... Um, uh, thing is not to try to do it always in mainstream places to to find your own audience and do it in you know like sort of pop-up galleries or um as try to escape the uh the kind of tyranny of um of uh everybody's attention being on on these um mass audience um heavily policed places but do you think they have edulcorated like even if it happens yeah. It's been totally edulcorated by the institutions as well. No, that's true. I, I mean, I, um, I, I think it's really hard for the British, too, to um, kind of uh, get in the right mood. I mean, I, I, there's a famous thing that curators behave differently when they go abroad. And when you're abroad, you're ready to um, get pissed or try this or take uh, stay up late and then when you're here you people are oh god i gotta get going uh, you know um so it's really true it's a <laughs> yeah. thank you very much i have a question for you i've never met a european artist saying as a european artist i think this or that uh, I've met German artists say, well, us Germans do this or that, and us Italians. So now you say, as a Latin, Latin American artist, uh, where are you from? Tucumán, Argentina. So I would suggest, I mean, that, you know, we need subtitles in Mexico to watch Argentine movies. We can barely understand <laughs> the language. I'm not kidding. And uh, I'm a Latin American artist, and I can barely understand you. What I'm trying to say is that, say, as an Argentinian artist, and not as a Latin American artist. Uh, say as They're an the artist. ones as uh, an artist. But no, I feel like, I, maybe this is wrong, maybe I am generalizing. Yeah. But I have this as impulse to get to the public and to go to the street and to put the stuff and get there and blah, blah, blah. And it's just, it becomes so tame. Tame? Or you go to the police station. And I mean, like, it's just... <laughs> we had an example. Okay. Yes, can I? We had an, just, just to pick up on what you're saying, we had an example of precisely what you were talking about at the University of Essex. And Damian Flores came to, to p perform, I suppose, his boxing, organized at El Hijo del Santo. Wrestling. Re wrestling. Res sorry, wrestling, wrestling. And part of the game was to be thrown out of the ring. And this took place in a basement, big basement at the university. But that wasn't allowed to happen for fear that the person being thrown <laughs> would indeed fall on the concrete and damage themselves. So the whole, the whole thing was actually spoiled from the point of view of, a, of, a, of, a, of an artist's action. Shouldn't, shouldn't we create like a free zone of everything can happen here? <laughs> Questions, comments. Um, if, if there's a if there's a pause, I had a, a kind of specific-ish question I wanted to ask David, which was I didn't have room for. That's okay. About um, one of your works that you made in 1976, reading letters from friends, which um, is missing. The documentation of the film itself is missing, but you still have the letters. 
and um, and whether you felt that um, part of, part of its power, part of the reason it's remembered, is because it's missing. It hasn't been recreated. But whether you felt that um, there might come a moment or the right kind of context to to remake that kind of work, which was. I don't know, I'm imagining quite a sort of uh, had a certain emotional impact at that moment because you were living in LA, you were away from, no, I <coughs> away from London. I, no, I, uh, um, the, um, the, um, I, from London I moved to 76 to Los Angeles and then I went to Buenos Aires, Argentina for a few months in 78, which was a very hard time in Argentina, mm. was the um, high point of the, of the um, um, military dictatorship it was really horrible, but somehow I was i 've been living in Los Angeles for too long, so I was out of it completely so I only when I was there I realized the the, the horror of what was going on and then I was invited to do a show um, at the Kaik by Glusberg and since I and uh, I was getting a lot of letters from London, London friends and many of those letters from Linda Morris uh, who is actually in Norwich now mm -hmm. and then I decided to to make a video of uh, me reading l my London friends letters and uh, some of those letters they were very um, emotional to me, because in one of those letters Linda described the death of Marcel Brotas, the Belgian artist, and in another letter the death of Barbara Rice, who was an uh, American curator living in London, very, very important in the uh, 70s. She actually brought all the American, North American conceptualists to, um, to London through Nigel Greenwood Gallery and, uh, and uh, Jack Wendler. And I, in fact, it was one letter by Jack Wendler I read. So it was, uh, it was uh, um, reading the letters was like communicating this information to my, the audience in Buenos Aires. Mm -hmm. Do you think it would ever make sense to, to do that work again? Do you think something that has so much content in comparison to... Well, and it's interesting because the work disappears, so many people want to buy now. It's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the one they want to buy it. is that one, you know. Uh, so I don't have it. So um, artists, uh, we don't just want to show that piece and everything. But I still hope to find the original one day. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I like, I don't know if, if Felipe also can identify works that have this quality, but in some way the work kind of identifies a distance between um, your experience in London and being in Buenos Aires. And to what extent, when you've worked between London and, or between England, I should say, in your case, and Mexico and Brazil, whether that, that distance sort of becomes something that's written into the work. In the work that I'm doing now, it certainly does. Um, internet has, uh, and Skype, uh, which are, have no geographies, uh, have created the possibility of you being there almost. I, have, I can talk to my grandchildren in Sao Paulo and my grandchildren are sitting in, uh, in Amsterdam. That used to be the case, so uh, distance is different. It's no less nor more, but it's different. And uh, that has made me, I'm piling those things up, and I have been making visual scores to be interpreted. And they span distance and geography. And so, not specifically with, with the UK or with London or whatever it is, just distances, because I've had several other distances in my life. Yeah, I mean, talking about the email, the letter was something very important then. Yeah. It took 15 days, a letter from London to Buenos Aires. So when that letter arrived, it was precious, you know, and it meant something to you, you know. Uh, email really is, it doesn't really mean much these days. I mean, you know, it's like it's disposable. Well, a letter is like, I still have those letters, and I open the box, can read them. I, I don't know, I, I love letters. <laughs> I learned how to take care of e-letters. Oh? Email of e-letters. And I take, I never write a letter uh, straight on the screen. I write it as a document, oh, yeah. save it, and then put it and send it. All right. And I do the same thing for letters that I get. Yeah. So, because my dad told me that to use carbon copies. 
and uh, I follow what my dad well, said. I, I don't want to um, make it sound morbid, but I wonder what um, Felipe and David thought of of the museum and private gallery industry of posthumous works. Um, I love, I like recreated works and works sometimes which have a 20-year uh, date span because an artist has rethought the work from the 70s to the present. But I find it very difficult to believe in, in um, for instance, a lot of Anna Mendieta's work. She's only one example, or Francesca Woodman, or whoever, or recent, Joseph or Joseph Boyce. I just wonder what your opinions about um, things being done after people die. You mean posthumous works of peace, uh, artists who passed away? Artists who passed away and yeah. who, fra- who, was, who are, it's, which works are now being realized sometimes from raw material like a, yeah. a contact sheet well, or negative yeah. but sometimes not even from that. I give you my opinion because I have strong ideas okay. about that. Okay. I have been friends of uh, great artists who some of them passed away yeah. and I example of Marcel Brotas who was a, uh, uh, my best friends for many years here in London. And then um, he passed away and suddenly his work became, as is happening with Helio Tisica, very polished, almost minimalistic and clean cut. They take all the sex out, all the politics out and they become almost geometric works. Artists that they were <laughs> really very human, you know. So I think Helio de Sica and uh, Marcel Brotas are a good example of um, of, it, of of what happens, you know, after you go. Uh, but and that say I will end up with one thing. I asked Marcel Brotas many years ago, and I said, well, you know, I want to do this work again and again. He said, David, as long as you're alive, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, right. So that's what I'm doing there now. While I'm alive, I'm doing my own things, reconstructing my own work. So once I'm gone, they do. It's like directions to the curators so in the future. <laughs> I, was, I was made to think about this the first time that I read about a show being uh, set up in uh, New York and that they were recreating all the, uh, a whole bunch of the uh, emblematic Joseph Boy's works. And I was slightly, I remember very clearly, slightly disturbed. I didn't like the idea. I thought they were cashing in on it and so on and so forth. But then that made me think uh, on the ephemeral nature of a work and that's when I, when I really did a double twist because I've been trying to do visual scores ever since the early late 60s and I have it now pretty well tied and people are doing my scores in different parts of the world. Guillermo Gomez Peña is recreating his performance pieces which he never documented. I never, I never had time to document those things. A lot of the uh, um, uh, Fluxus pieces were uh, Peter and uh, Barbara uh, Moore, they, they were the only ones that photographed. And Joseph Boyce had one single woman photographer, I don't remember her, right, her name right now, photogra- photographing his works. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know whether they were, they would be the recreation of those works as valid now if they were recreated the same way. But if somebody's depends on the intention of the recreation. Somebody wants to show it in the New York gallery and make some money out of it, fuck it. But if they want to, uh, an artist has a, you know, empathy with the artist, well, let's, let's try it out, why not? I mean, uh, Mozart is being reinterpreted by jazz quartets, you know, all the time. Any last quick question, please? Yes. Oh, two quick, yeah. Very quick, I am from a cool comedian and we're partners for the event, so we're broadcasting live. If you wish to continue these conversations, we would be delighted to hear you and uh, take you to our stand. Oh. Thank, you. Thank you very much. And there's another. Um, can you go? I have a question for Don Addis. Uh, um, I'm interested in having more details um, with regard to the reason why uh, art in Latin America went to Stockholm and um, also to understand a bit better uh, what are the mechanisms with which an exhibition becomes something else because you said that when, when the, the exhibition traveled to Stockholm, traveled to Sp- Spain as well, but uh, you mentioned that when it went to Stockholm it kind of took a kind of focus 
into the uh, Mexican Revolution. So, as you said, it became something different. You were quite um, willing to, to underline that, you know, that while the exhibition travels, it becomes something else. So... Okay, I, just very, very, yeah. very briefly, um, one of the key experiences I had while I was researching the exhibition and traveling in Latin America was going to the ICOM conference in Buenos Aires in 1987, I think it was, possibly 86. It was organized by the International Council of Museums. And I made many contacts there, and, and it was very, that's where I, <laughs> for me, discovered the Madi work. But also among the delegates there was uh, the director of the Moderna Museum in Stockholm. And he, I, I, I talked about the exhibition, and he was very keen to take it. Now, the, the gallery and the National Museum in Stockholm, it was, it was in both the Moderna Museum on the island and in the National Museum, which is the major, like the National Gallery here. That's opposite the Royal Palace in Stockholm. And they put up this enormous banner, this red banner saying, land and freedom. And the palace complained and said, no, no actually, we don't like that at all. It's far too in, in, incendiary. No, I don't. <laughs> and, um, uh, I think they had to modify the size of it. I think they had to bring, <laughs> bring down the size. So, so there was, I mean, whether that was part of his intention in, in taking it on in the first place, I wouldn't like to say, but it sort of became a, a bit of a, a kind of political issue that the renaming of the show to Land could and I, Freedom. Could I ask you a question regarding your show? You were the curator of the show. Interestingly enough, I, I, it's very interesting to meet you today. Because if it, three days ago I was going through um, um, through a bookshelf from a friend of mine, Sasha, and I saw for the first time your um, uh, book. So I'm very glad to meet you today. And I wanted, when I saw the book, I, I wanted to ask the curator, the author of that book, one question: Is why? I'm sorry, it's, it's not it's not aggressive, <laughs> but the question is this: Why um, you? ignored completely Argentinian contemporary arts of the 60s and 70s and 80s. Yes. Um, they all the Brazilians, pages and pages. Argentina, you have <laughs> no one. You know, I, I'm a Mexican who lives here. Can you answer this, that? this goes on every day in every yeah. field. <laughs> well, no, I know you're talking about the painters as opposed to... You're, you're talking no, about... No, but the painters, they're, 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 Vega, very, they're um, very important. No, they're very important generation of Argentinian artists of the so-called Vitella Institute, mm. the conceptual Argentinians of the 60s and 70s and 80s. There are none there, none of them. No, I know. Um, and I, I did actually, I wanted to include, I think the decision was taken, uh, well, arbitrary, basically, I think is the only answer. Yes, um, I know, I, I know. I, I, but it was, it was I, arbitrary. Think, I think British curators have to start paying more attention to artists in Argentina. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think not only in Argentina. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's true, it's true. So because I, I, I think it was an important stepping block and now we have much more information, we know much more. Yeah, it's, it's because 20 it's like, something years well, later. Well, it's like Guy Brett emphasizes yeah. always Brazil I, I or Mexico. I can't claim ignorance. I can't claim ignorance. But I, did, I did travel a lot in Argentina I and I, I was a great admirer of the work. Um, I actually can't recall now. We, we'd stopped in 1980. Um, it was a... I, I think, actually, I know what I wanted to do. I, Andrew and I talked about this. We were going to have a follow-on exhibition. Sorry, I, I mean, that's a very important that's aspect. That's right. We really were. And I was going to begin there. Mm -hmm. So I didn't include it in that show. I was going to begin another show, which sadly never happened. But perhaps it's so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you would to redo the show today, what would, uh, how would it change? Or would it be possible to, to see this kind of show I again? Can I answer that and yeah. wind up? because I had a conversation about this recently with somebody from America who was saying, oh, this amazing book that we always use in our teaching and, and what an extraordinary show it was. But of course it could never happen again. Yeah. And that e in all sorts of ways it could never happen again because just getting together those works and bringing them from Latin America now is, is just mind-bogglingly expensive. I mean, it's so complicated and there's so many more layers of of uh, health and safety and bureaucracy and everything else involved in these things, that I think it, it's, it's impossible on a practical level, and it's also imp impossible on a 
uh, on a sort of conceptual level. And I think that that is just an indication of where we've come from since, uh, you know, 1970, when, you know, we were all beginning to be, well, you were obviously already, you were the things that we were being interested in. <laughs> but, but I think that many of us acquired the conscience of being Latin American, being in London, you know, uh, not being, mm -hmm. so, so I think it happened uh, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe at the same times, you know, it's yep. not... Uh, yeah, it's yeah. Can I uh, just invite everybody now um, to uh, all speakers and everybody else um, to join Weckler on Facebook um, and on Twitter so that um, you, know, you can keep on uh, contributing questions to the debate. The debate can continue in, in a, a future cyberspace. Um, we, we have a break now uh, in order to set up um, Davi Lamelas' uh, film, just to just a brief uh, moment to set up the film. And then after that, there is a performance from Felipe. So um, can we have a, ha uh, sorry? It's a tiny, tiny, tiny performance. performance. But can we have, a, at this point, a round of applause for all our speakers. Thank you very much. Indeed.